my channel. My name is Erin and this is the Unconquered Butterfly channel where we talk about fibromyalgia. If you don't know what that is, I would say check out some of the earlier videos um, that talk more about what fibromyalgia is, the symptoms, at least for me, um, and what a flare day might look like and what a flare day is. Um, but today we're going to talk about Christmas. The holiday season is so stressful for regular people who don't have a chronic illness that includes chronic pain and chronic fatigue. And I love this time of year. It is my favorite time of year. I live for Christmas. Honestly, when New Year's comes, I'm so sad. It's so, so hard to put away this lovely tree. Um, but I am spending my first holiday season uh, with being diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I tend to go a little overboard when it comes to everything having to do with this season. I love the moment it becomes October uh, until New Year's. I am all about every single holiday that's coming up. I should say, you know, the three, um, <laughs> but I love it. Um, so I, yeah, I tend to go a little overboard. I tend to spend a lot of time doing candies, cookies, chocolates, dishes, you know, baking dishes, um, all of the things that go along with Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner. Um, obviously decorating. Uh, I love gifting presents. It's literally like what I live for. So gifting presents, wrapping those presents, decorating my house to look like fall, Halloween, back to fall, and then Christmas. And then, you know, it all goes away. <sighs> so how do I deal with that while also having chronic pain chronic fatigue, and just never knowing what day is going to be a good day. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today, how to prep for the holiday season with fibromyalgia and with chronic pain, chronic fatigue. You don't even have to have fibromyalgia to struggle with holiday season prepping. Honestly, it's just takes it out of everyone. So how did I do it this year? That was a big concern of mine because I love this holiday season so much. Um, so how did I do it? I did it when I felt motivated to do it and I made sure I took extra time or I did it earlier so that I had extra time to accomplish it. I found that with fibromyalgia, I just generally need more time than I did before to finish things, to make things, to check off my tasks on my to-do list. Um, I normally get through like half of that because I just need more breaks in between to rest up so that I don't kill my body. Um, so I just, yeah, I've gotten used to having to add more time into my routine of my day. Um, even with struggling with insomnia, uh, and needing to feel, feeling like I need to sleep like 12 or 14 hours. And um, I still find that it just, you know, may take me a couple of days to accomplish something that could have taken someone without that issue mm, an afternoon, maybe. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, for example, this tree, uh, my husband normally has the uh, rule that we don't put up the tree until after his birthday because he is a December baby. Um, and I normally am very good at adhering to that. However, adhering to my two new rules of doing things early and doing them when I'm motivated to do them, I finagled uh, getting the tree up before Thanksgiving. So for me, having the tree up before Thanksgiving is not that big of a deal. I just, you know, maybe don't turn the lights on on Thanksgiving or I don't listen to Christmas music while making my dishes or sides or whatever thing my turkey for Thanksgiving um, I love Christmas 
So I'm going to be honest, there's not a lot of decorations for Thanksgiving. So, um, so I finagled getting this up early and I would say that if you cannot finagle getting this up early because your spouse or because you just don't want it up before Thanksgiving, uh, a great idea is to instead pull out the boxes like the tree box and the ornament boxes and the decoration boxes before Thanksgiving, middle of November time frame, set them aside somewhere in a closet or in a guest bedroom when they're out of the way that you don't need them. Um, but in easy reach because honestly getting them out of storage can be a huge headache and very tiring because it's a lot of physical exertion depending on where you've stored them. So that might just be an afternoon for you and then you're done. You need a break. I know that that was the case for me. So, um, the next thing I would recommend is maybe only getting the tree up. So only putting the tree up, no lights, no ornaments, might look a little strange, but it could take you honestly enough energy to need a break after putting up the tree. And that's okay. If that's what you need, we're doing this stuff earlier rather than later. Um, so yeah, you have enough time to be able to take all the breaks that you need to take. And a non-decorated tree is nice. It's not horrible to look at. So for an afternoon, one day, that's totally fine. The next day, maybe you put the lights on. And then the next day after that, you put all your ornaments on because I find putting the ornaments on to be the most tedious part of putting a tree up. So moving on to presents. I love gifting. I absolutely like, it's the best part, honestly, of this season is getting gifts and giving them to people. So I tend to start searching for gifts real early. We'll say summer early. Mostly because my husband, if he had to write us a, a letter to Santa of what he wanted for Christmas, it would say a big fat nothing. That's what he gives me to work with, nothing. He doesn't want a single thing for Christmas. And of course I'm not gonna get him nothing. It's Christmas, come on. So I start early, I keep track of what he says. Oh, it would be nice to have that. Or, oh, that might that would be nice to have. Or things that maybe we were searching for but we haven't found yet. Um, so for example, I can talk about this because I, my finagling gave him his one Christmas present early so that I could decorate early and that was a desk. We had gone looking for desks. We didn't find any we liked or in our price range that we wanted. And that was probably like eight months ago by now, maybe a year ago. And so I found a desk online that I had shipped to me um, around August time frame, I wanna say. Um, and so I've had it for a while in storage, just hanging out, waiting for Christmas. And it was great to get it off my hands early because there's no way I was going to be wrapping those boxes. So win for me. Um, and other things like other Christmas gifts, I just find them throughout the like, I don't know, August to November time frame. I normally like to have like pretty much all of my gifts bought by December. So again, that's taking, you know, giving me lots of extra time and I can do it when I'm motivated to do it. Um, if I'm gonna do some small business shopping in the area, I can make sure I go on a day where I'm feeling good and to look around and be able to get out of the house and things like that. And I know that I'm not pressured to have to find the thing I need, like the present, the best present or whatever it might be, right away because I have time. So that's gonna be the theme of this video, giving yourself extra time. Um, and uh, the same for, where was I? Uh, wrapping the presents, that's it. Yeah, brain fog, sorry, one moment. <laughs> wrapping the presents. Um, I, if you have kids and you can't wrap the presents early because they still believe in Santa, I understand. I would say wrap them while the kids are away and then put them back into their hiding place, wherever that might be, the closet, the garage, I don't know. I don't have kids, I don't have to worry about hiding things. Um, so 
I would recommend wrapping early. I've started wrapping just a few of the gifts today. So a little bit of simple wrapping. I showed you earlier some of the video of me wrapping the presents. Um, I do them in segments. So that wasn't all of the presents that I wrapped. I only did a few until I started feeling not too well. And then I stopped and took a break. And I still have a lot more time to go ahead and wrap the rest of the presents and get them under the tree um, or wrap them and put them back into hiding um, all that jazz so I honestly theme of this video give yourself extra time extra time um, and then the one thing that you can't give yourself too much extra time for are like Thanksgiving dinner uh, side dishes and turkey and yada yada I mean the turkey definitely but the side dishes who knows um, as well as Christmas dinner. So the greatest thing that we do um, is we get together with friends and so other adults and we divvy up the dishes between all of us adults. So like for Thanksgiving, um, I took the sweet potato casserole and my husband took the baked macaroni and cheese um, and then others took each a dish as well. Um, and so that meant that we only had to be worried about making two dishes or buying the groceries for two dishes. It makes it a lot more affordable um, and uh, it makes it much easier because we can just easily make the two dishes. I don't have to worry about standing for long hours in the kitchen um, trying to get these meals prepared that, you know, we want them to taste really good. So of course we're going to spend our time and our energy into making these meals yummy. Um, but I think that it's so much easier if you can divvy them up. And so if you're going to have company anyways, and there are other adults, obviously in that company, gift them a dish that they need to make or something, offer them, let them offer or kindly suggest that they bring a dish of their choosing. And we normally like with my husband, he brought baked mac and cheese. Um, that is like one of his favorite nostalgic uh, dishes for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner and so that's what he chose to bring so we always like try to do something that we love we bring a dish that we love so that we know that there's definitely something we're gonna want to eat but also our friends have similar taste to us so that's helpful um so the other option if you and your spouse or just you are the only adult in the um, cooking kitchen for those uh, dinners uh, a recommendation is to make two or three dishes that are ones that like maybe are like family recipes or very nostalgia um, filling whatever words nostalgia esque for you um, and then you know the side dishes just go and buy them prepared from somewhere if possible that they only need to be heated up on that day um, because let's be honest like the three dishes you prepare or whatever that might be is gonna taste wonderful and amazing and those side dishes are just side dishes so we don't need them to be like phenomenal I mean unless you're a cook and that's your thing I don't know but I would recommend buying either prepared side dishes or also finding recipes that you can make the day before so like with the turkey you want to start brining it early um with like some of the side dishes you can make those the night before let them sit in the fridge and then be heated up the day of um so that's also an option giving you your giving you extra time and breaks in between things to help the holiday season be uh more enjoyable and less stressful for you because as we know with fibromyalgia, stress just increases those symptoms that you feel daily and uh, amplifies them and make them makes them worse. And this time of the year can be stressful for pretty much every adult. Um, so yeah, I love this time of year and I am so excited to spend this season with my friends and my husband. Um, and to enjoy it even though I might be doing less so like I've made less like cookies or less like fudge or items like throughout 
this time frame that I would have made more of or I would have done more for. Um, but I still get to enjoy this beautiful Christmas tree, the act of gifting gifts with um, wrapping on them and just the moments of joy spent with friends and family around a table of, you know, shared dishes and meals. So yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, a amazing new year, and I hope that this time of year is not too stressful or too painful for you. Please remember to take extra breaks and to rest when you need to because it's totally fine if you don't get everything you want to get done. That's probably normal for even regular people and let's be honest, we're not so regular. So yeah, I love you all. I hope you all have wonderful holidays and take care. Bye.